you're an alpha, you have a very strong personality, uh, uh, extremely strong personality, and then you got a team with Shaq, and then you got a team with Phil Jackson, and you guys are all working together. How was it taking coaching from an alpha and you're an alpha? And was there a progression of you finally understanding him or him understanding him? What did that look like, the relation between you and Phil? No, at, at first it was rocky, but I didn't understand it was rocky. And, and, and let me elaborate. I was extremely naive. And with Phil and his genius, his responsibility was to get the team to a place to win titles. It wasn't a piece to appease one player. It wasn't to look out for this player. It was to get the collective hold to win a championship. So he would do whatever it took to make sure that that happened. Mm. He would see the friction between myself and Shaquille and say, okay, how can I use that? All right, I know Kobe has a passion to play, so come hell or high water, doesn't matter what's going on in his personal life, doesn't matter what's happening here with the team, he's gonna show up and perform no matter what. Shaq is more emotional. If something's going on, he won't. So therefore, I gotta figure out how to create a wedge between myself and Cole, because then that brings me closer to Shaquille. And then that helps me better manage Shaq. So that was his ability to manage the team, which was absolutely brilliant. I used to tell him all the time, I said, Phil, look, I know what you're doing, bro. Like, don't insult my intelligence. I know you're being a dick to me on purpose. Like, just, like, tell me. No, no, okay, you're gonna stick, stay with it? All right, cool, all right. <laughs> How's your relationship till today? I mean, you guys want fights. like a father figure. Really? Yeah, it feels like a father figure, man. So all, when you were hearing all the uh, uh, experts saying what they were saying, commentators saying what they were saying about Phil, how were you taking that when they were saying what they were saying about him with the, when he was at the Knicks? Um, I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. And I, I told Phil, I said, Phil, you no, know, this is all just karma for writing literally three books about me. This is, <laughs> this is your karma. <laughs> um, you told him that. I did tell him that. <laughs> It was just all in good fun. Oh. Um, but I, I was upset because people don't understand him. And he is a genius in every sense of the word. And how he sees the game, how he sees the spirituality of the game. And people don't understand that. And worse than that, they're intimidated by that. And even worse, they try to discredit that because they do not have the level of passion and obsessiveness obsessiveness to get to that level. So they figured the best thing to do is to tear that level down. That's fucked up. I'm with you, they're 100% by the way. <clears throat> Obviously he had a lot of interesting rituals. You would hear about the yoga, you would hear about all the stuff that we, he would do. What is the weirdest thing he did with you in practice that you're like, what the hell are we doing here? <laughs> he, uh, he had a Tai Chi master come to practice. And uh, we walk out there and, you know, the Tai Chi master standing in center court and tells us to take our shoes off, take our shoes off. And I'm pissed because I'm, I'm ready to, like, play basketball. And he's standing up there and says everybody closes their eyes and stuff. And he does stuff like monk gazing at moon and talks about the fingertips and barely touching and the spirituality of all that. And I'm peeking around like, is everybody doing this shit? Like... <laughs> What the hell's going on? And there, you know, and big ass Phil, Phil's there doing it himself. He's like, you know, he's doing this whole, like doing all this stuff, you know? And I'm like, damn, okay, I'm gonna try it. But honestly, it, 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 I bought into it. I bought into the meditation. I bought into the deeper connection that exists within the game. And so when you watch our teams or you watch any of Phil's teams or Chicago teams, game six against Utah, you watch our games, you know, game seven against Boston. We were never rattled, ever, because we we're always in the moment, always in the present, always extremely calm, always looking at the reality of the situation and not letting our emotions cloud our execution. And that comes from being in that meditative state that he would teach and preach from day one. <laughs>